So now in my hands, what I have is I have a transmitter. I can work on all the protocols from the TBS Crossfire to the R9M to the Flysky to Spectrum to the toys. And I also have a 5.8 gigahertz diversity with SD card expansion. And if I don't like the internal diversity, I can switch out to docking with rapid fire. Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today I wanted to share with you what I am considering almost the perfect setup just in terms of a quick solution or actually this is my daily driver now uh, not including the goggles because if I'm going scouting for new places to fly I to be honest I, especially when you go by yourself I don't like to just put my goggles on and uh, fly with that because then you don't know what's around you, you don't know if someone's just going to come punch you, knock you out and take everything. So first of all we'll start with some of the accessories which is the R9M, the multi protocol modules connected in the X9 Lite. The X9 Lite is my daily driver now. I have a 10,000 milliamp power bank in here which can charge the controller as well as the goggles here but these are, I'm using this as a screen more than a goggle which I've also modified and I have some good news about this which we'll take a look at one step at a time. So R9M a couple you know wires and stuff for the docking now this will make sense in a little bit so I use the docking with this goggle right here and um, I've used rapid fire on it this is basically the EV 800 D's the diversity version and uh, which is slightly modified as well I have two batteries in here um, from I took the one from the EV 800 D diversity and I put it in here so I have two batteries in here and um, what's really nice is it has a tripod mount and this is what I took full advantage of at this little part that I've designed right here that goes on the X9 Lite. Now this is also going to be made out of carbon fiber. But right now I'm still in the prototyping stage. This is the second prototype. First prototype, if anyone's watching my Instagram, you would have seen it. And we'll, we'll take a closer look right now. So right now this is rocking two batteries in here. And what's really nice about it is when you connect the rapid fire, there is no desyncing issues uh, with the fast switching speed. So it makes for a really great combo if I really needed some better reception so I can easily do that. Now you'll be like, okay, well, how do you power this? Because it takes a minimum of 2S. Well, what I do is I take the power bank and I have the FXT uh, booster USB, which takes, you know, the power bank and ch changes it to like a 2S. And that's how I'm able to power this up and work flawlessly. So this is a really nice setup. I just keep this always here. Now let's move the antenna. This is the patch antenna that I'm using. It's really great for outdoors currently. I'm, I've had it for a while, but I never really used it that much. We're going to take a look at it in a bit right now. It comes both SMA and RPS. I mean, I have both versions. So I'm just going to show you how I would normally set up now. And I'll remove the gimbal protectors. I'd pop this guy out. And then I would flip this over. Now, when you flip this over, you're going to have to put two M3 screws in here. As you can tell, those right there. Because it's um, the, the goggles gotten heavier because I put two batteries in here. So it'll kind of just stretch out. But when I make that out of carbon fiber... So it'll kind of stretch out, but when I make it out of carbon fiber, it works better. And don't forget, this is two millimeter 3D printed part. So once I even add these screws right here, it becomes more stable. So right now I'm adding the uh, screws into place right here. I'm gonna do both sides. Um, it just gives it much more rigidity and strength. However, I am trying to eliminate this step when I'm in the field because it can get kind of annoying to do, especially if you lose these screws. So you're gonna have to bring in a couple with you. But this way it's really nice because you just remove two screws and you can just pack everything right up. And um, I really like that. Now it's really sturdy for a 3D printed PLA mount right here. And um, it, it holds really well. So let me actually show you that. We're going to plug in the screen here. I recommend you plug in the screen before putting the antennas on because the way to spin it just becomes a little bit more um, annoying. There we go. Awesome. Okay. We can use this bottom piece right here. So now I have my controller. So the next thing I want to do is since I always, I'm always running the multi protocol module, I'm going to put the antenna on. Now don't forget to put the antenna on the multi protocol module. I also have this battery meter slash checker, which I use always, constantly. They're really great and it's just always with my gear. And I can use like, like a 4S to do some USB output. So I'm just going to close this up real quick and just get the antennas I need. And now. This is how it looks like. And flying it, the angle, everything about it is just right. It's, I'm probably going to put this on Thingiverse right now for you guys. Uh, so if anyone wanted to download it. This is not, by all means, this is not the final version. But it is a 100% usable version. Uh, you will need 20mm 
standoffs, you'll need one, two, three, four, uh, preferably five because the, the newer version should take five, one right here in the middle. Uh, it just adds a little bit more strength when it goes right here and um, that's going to be really good. So right now, as you can tell, it's really great and if you wanted to do a next trap, you would want to put it right here and you'd have to put the two screws because then it'll just flop back and forth. So you can put, put the neck strap on this standoffs and it works out really great. So I have been flying non-stop like this and I really do enjoy it and I'm getting quite a lot of range. And to be honest, it's not even that heavy and what's really cool, it doesn't tip over when you let it go. So that's really nice. I don't know, I haven't tried standing it, but yeah, no, it's not going to stand. Yeah, so it's not going to tip over, which is something really cool, which is really nice as well. And um, it's all around a functional setup that's very minimal and it doesn't take a lot of time to 3D print. So even the button is very accessible here, and Welcome your fingers are not gonna. And your and your fingers. Just give me a second. And your fingers are not really gonna hit this middle part here. So 20 millimeters I find to be really good. You can also go smaller, but then you'll have to redesign the top part here. Uh, it's three pieces and it takes a total of, I don't know, like 20 minutes to print all of them. So it's really fast to print. So you could just bring a couple extras with you. And that's the whole idea here. No support with um, super fast to print and just very easy all around. The most time consuming part probably just installing the standoffs. That's it. And it's only like what, four standoffs? But it'll be five standoffs. So now in my hands, what I have is I have a transmitter. I can work on all the protocols from the TBS Crossfire to the R9M to the Flysky to Spectrum to the toys. And I also have a 5.8 gigahertz diversity with SD card expansion and if I don't like the internal diversity I can switch out to a docking with rapid fire so it's really great now um, it, you know it, it's it's I think this is one of the best setups ever it's I think the one of the cheapest to kind of get started because this is a hundred bucks this is around 70 bucks that's 170 bucks but even then you know I have the best some of the best goggles I'm still using this transmitter and I do highly believe this is one of the best transmitters currently so also on these goggles, the DVR is really great. When I went to China and I was diving the Banggood building, I was actually using an EV800D because uh, I didn't bring anything because they said they were going to supply everything. I would have brought my fat sharks or something. But um, it was working really great and I was really happy with it. And I think I was just using dipolar antennas at the time. Um, the weight is not bad at all. It feels pretty good. So I think I got the design just right. The first version was very flimsy, but it also did very well. So this is why I've kind of added a little curves, add a little bit more structure. I've also added these little right here. These little tabs here just to you know um, give it some extra support now it's it this has just been cut now the new ones have been redesigned to hopefully fit in one of those uh, cracks right there so it doesn't just keep slipping out like that and I also had the standoff set up right here to keep these in, intact and um, it should give it even more stability but it's still really nice it feels like it's a gimbal I don't know. <laughs> um, and again it's not heavy it feels really nice uh, just that little nice tilt and it just feels like the center of gravity is really great on this um, I got lucky on the design or how it came out to be it was really difficult to try to figure out how to do this and, and measure it so uh, I'm really happy you know it, it kind of worked out but I do feel as if in the long run this little middle part right here will eventually snap off and I'm waiting for that to happen and then uh, we'll see what we're gonna do after that so right now I'm just gonna power off the transmitter here so this is currently my ultimate controller ever even you know I have the Horus I have everything but I'm using a QX7 uh, bag with this and that's why I have so much space because it takes less footprint and I'm able to fit everything inside that bag it's pretty insane I mean let's 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 try to put everything back inside and I, I can show you how everything is fitting it's just out of this world I really like it it just it makes it, it makes it so simple to get going and start setting up that it just you know it makes it a little bit easier to go and just start flying. So right now what I do is I'm, I'm packing up. I just move these to the side. So I've also just removed the antennas here. Okay, maybe you guys should see. All right. So I'm gonna remove the goggle. I'm gonna have to remove these two screws right here so it could flip down. I'm gonna keep that for a later step right now. So I'm just gonna remove the antenna from my multi protocol module. I'll stick it in with this guy, bend it just like this so it'll be in a really nice position here. I'll put that away because it looks really nasty. And I just move this off to the side. And I actually had to cut some of this off, but I kept it preserved so I can just come in and glue it when I want it. Um, and then I just bring in my goggle here and I put it just like this. I have the screen facing that way, so 
you know, there isn't anything. And this is really nice plastic, soft plastic, so it's not going to scratch this right here. And then obviously we have my dock king here. And then this one just comes up over right here. These can just be dropped anywhere, just like that. Usually I drop this one here. Got my gimbal protectors. And this is everything. This is crazy. When you look at it, there's so much in here, but it doesn't even look like it. It's kind of like a stealth setup. You got a bunch of antennas, you got a power supply, you have your goggles, you have your transmitter, you have multi protocol module, a battery checker, the R9M. Um, I don't have the TBS Crossfire in here because I don't have anything that flies TBS Crossfire, but you could just put it one of, in one of these right here. And if you take a closer look up here, you'll find that um, what I've done here, it's really nice. It has this little Velcro thingy, and I have these little tiny Velcros, and I just you know, I keep it really nice. I just put that right there and it'll just stay in its position. And um, I really like that. It just makes it really nice. So what I'm going to need to add to this is an M2 screwdriver. So I don't, so I'm able to take apart the, uh, what is it called? So I'm able to drop down this little adapter. Uh, what's really nice, I'm very happy how it came out where I can just flip it over and don't have to keep taking it off every time, you know, just take everything off every time I want to. Uh, put it away or start again. So I just basically it's just two screws here, but I still want to get rid of this step somehow. Uh, I need to get I need to figure something. I need to get creative basically, and uh, try not to lose these screws here. And everything closes. That, that's what's so nice about this. When this is made out of carbon fiber, it's going to be really great. But the thing that will you're not going to be able to put a neck strap. I don't put a neck strap. Some people do. So when you if you're going to be using a neck strap, then you're going to have to put the other two. Um, screws into place with the carbon fiber version however also when you do the carbon fiber version you might have to uh, print out some TPU mounts that will can just be on this edge or glue them to this edge so when you drop it it doesn't scratch up your transmitter this obviously around the power button will get scratched with carbon fiber but I'll try to chamfer it on my machine but I'll do my best and we'll see how that goes so overall this is my ultimate setup let me know what you guys think down in the comment section and I'm really curious to see your setup so if you have a setup please post it on my Instagram at drone mesh um, I'd really love to see it and um, I'm pretty sure a lot of people would also love to see it as well just to get some more inspiration or to get ideas to just create something really really nice so this is the best I've come up with so far uh, not including you know charging stuff or, or the way that I take my quads but this is the necessities now now, even if I don't have, I don't bring my fat sharks, I'm still fine. I have SD card, I have, you know, I have DVR, diversity, controller that controls everything, power bank just in case, and um, my docking, which I'll probably put the rapid fire in here. I haven't done that just yet because I don't, I think it's going to be a really rare use case when I'm going to need the rapid fire, and I'm not into that right now. Right now, I'm just exploring. So this is my exploring setup that you guys are going to see me go explore the city with here with the little micros and whoops and well that's it guys i'll have everything linked down below now for the 3d printed part keep watching my thingiverse follow me on thingiverse drone mesh and also follow me on instagram i'll keep you guys updated there behind the scenes of what i'm doing and let me know if you guys want to see me cut this out of the carbon fiber or should i just cut it and then show you so let me know what you guys think i mean this is really nice look at this to be honest this thing was an accident i mean to, to have it do this i didn't think about it until i actually removed the screws like oh wait and then turns out to fit just beautifully just awesome boom and it closes I don't even have to put pressure on it and well that's it guys I'll see you in the next one peace out